Welcome, crypto enthusiasts, to the Independent Reserve Podcast. Episode 13 of the Independent Reserve Podcast. Gami and Nap Joya come talk some spicy stuff. So, um, Thanks, Lee. IMF, Nouns, Nas, Web3, what else we got? DeFi? Memes? Mog? Uh, yeah. Setting stuff on fire? <laughs> Yeah, it's all happening. All right, so where do we where do we start? Um, actually, no, I'll, I'll do an intro just because, like, Gami, um, I think everyone knows you from around forever, uh, associated very closely with Nouns and Nas and lots of work. Uh, Nap Enjoyer, you've been around since, I know, 2013. You're an OG in the space, but um, IMF's your new project, and that's what you're focusing on at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's my it's my new love. New love. <laughs> How do we get uh, deep into it? How can we – actually, where do we start? Let's start with IMF. Um, IMF's going to be the uh, what you're working on at the moment. Talk yeah. about that. Sure. Um, and Gami, like, interrupt and, and jump in, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Icebreaker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we, we jumped onto memes early, right? So there's an element of here of us shilling our own bags because, you know, we, we think we're clever and we saw a narrative and we bought stuff early and now we're trying to, like, look at where it is and work out what was next. And... It was a bit weird, and this happens all the time, right? Like, it didn't happen with Bitcoin. It, you know, there was a period where everyone was like, this is stupid, and then suddenly it's not stupid, and, you know, it's, uh, it's got ETFs, and, and we got, you know, um, you know, big money bidding it up, and, and it's kind of the same pattern that, like, repeats itself with different asset classes, and meme coins are no different, and they follow the same power law, right? So, like, when people think about meme coins, they think about pump.fund shitters, where every day there's, what, like, a hundred? Um, a thousand, a thousand, thousand. thousand. <laughs> and, and they kind of look at it as like, well, this is stupid because, you know, this just goes from like, you know, attention to nothing. Um, yeah, Gami's got a whole thesis on how like that's actually not stupid and could be the new social network. But, you know, we'll let, let Gami shield that. But it's, uh, but it's also not stupid in that its existence justifies the the culture coins that have sort of like become, you know, for lack of a better word, Lindy. And there's a handful of those, you know, Mog. Pepe, uh, Whiff probably, right? Like as in there's a handful that have like just moved up the power law distribution and all this activity down the bottom only helps solidify the position of the, the, larger, the larger coins at the top. And they've got insane market caps. Um, Pepe is like, what, you know, two bill uh, and, and, and climbing and, you know, probably go to 10 at the end of the cycle. Like as in if, if last cycle is any indication of how like Doge and SHIB sort of, um, you know, got bit up. As, uh, as the wealth effect comes in and people are looking for stuff further down the risk curve. Uh, but they never, get, they never get the extra attention that some of the, like the majors get. Like you cannot borrow against your Pepe. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds, cr- it, it sounds crazy <laughs> stay saying it, but when Maker came out, ETH was $5 billion market cap. And at that point, that, you couldn't borrow against your ETH. And people thought that was crazy, right? Mm-hmm. So the fact that they don't have DeFi, I don't think is, is, is more a function of there's existing brands, Aave, Maker, who just can't be seen to associate with what is the new asset class. And the new asset class is going to have value because if you're, if you're 20 and you've lived with the internet, you know Pepe, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're 20 and you've grown up in any you know western culture you know what mog means right like as it it's a um and and these are the things that you sort of see you have a bit of a chuckle and you buy so there's a there's a there's a pretty obvious sort of narrative as to why these are going to catch a bid and and you know maybe not this election cycle but being a pepe holder feels like being a trump supporter last election cycle <laughs> like we've been going around we've been chatting to people and we've been chatting to people who you would not expect to hold pepe bags explaining what the imf is and then there's a little bit of like oh yeah i own a really big pepe bag <laughs> <laughs> by the way because they caught onto the same thesis that we caught onto and and being able to unlock liquidity in it without having to sell it and then do other things is a there's a real market need for it so um we we basically we saw that and we decided to you know fill the need and we filled it by building the IMF which is a borrow lend where you deposit Pepe and you borrow money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and IMF is the International Meme Fund. It's the International Meme Fund. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. there's there's a story behind that as well. Like we, I think we were over at Nap's place. Uh, 
there was a bit of a catastrophe in, in his uh, basement. We won't go into the details, but after the cleanup, uh, we were down the pub. I think we were with uh, Clouded and Side Rides, yeah. uh, two of our <coughs> colleagues on, on IMF. And we were talking about these ideas around how memes had sort of taken off as this asset that sort of had zero promises, you know, like a lot of crypto where scams or a lot of cryptocurrencies that are uh, considered scams are considered that because of the promises they make and mm. don't deliver on. And so it's it's kind of like this new wave of assets where there's no promises, no roadmap, no utility. <laughs> it just is what it is, you know. <laughs> and so it's kind of like a pure um, version of, of a cryptocurrency. And it has all these features um, culturally that make it easy for people to proliferate it um, through memes. And memes are the universal language of the internet. So it's quite interesting. And we were sat around having some beers and we'd talked about this concept of um, basically creating, you know, the maker for memes essentially um, and, and having money as if it would die. And we initially thought like if we're going to do this, we have to meme it into existence. So we just started like thinking about all these stupid ideas that we could have to, um, to bring it uh, to, to the market. One being that like money instead of being pegged to one USD like a, a die or a USDC or a tether, we said, let's peg it to $6.90. <laughs> <laughs> and so we did. <laughs> um, this, this is where you should ask why. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I, 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 <laughs> we're uh, setting you up for a great joke. Uh, it's <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take the bait. Uh, why $6.90? Well, the serious answer is inflation, bro. But the less serious <laughs> answer is dinner for two. So. <laughs> 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 also, <laughs> it turns out that it doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you pay, pay it to a buck, six dollars ninety, ten dollars, a million. The the arbitrary, economics, right? it's arbitrary. It's absolutely arbitrary. So, and and money is arbitrary. It's just a unit of account for debt. So we're kind of like, you know, the the more the more like right brain answer or the right curve answer is like, because it doesn't matter, we should pick something that is also irreverent. Yeah, to, to, to play in with it. That's a, that's a good like um, that that points out why we called it IMF as well. Like we were we were jamming on ideas around what this thing actually is, and I'd recently been reading um, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, and it's you know about how like the IMF send these you know agents into countries to dish out loans against their resources, and they often can't pay back the loans, right? So. I was like, wouldn't it be funny if we were international meme fund <laughs> and we all agreed that it was worth chasing down? <laughs> oh, you, uh, I mean, you gave me one of your uh, the IMF cards, I think of the, uh, the meme token conference. Uh, and so I've got it because it's got Pepe with some hit glass, hit, hit me on glasses on. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. It's very serious out. stuff. Like <laughs> we've taken those cards all around. We, we were at um, Consent, Consensus in Austin and the cards were a hit because, you know, people are used to just all the same old crap. So it was easy to stand out, hand out some stickers and then explain to people uh, some of the <laughs> more funny stories behind the, the naming of IMF where uh, we're getting tagged by like uh, geopolitical leaders on Twitter <laughs> um, instead of the real IMF and they're, they're, they're like <laughs> protesting against us and all this sort of stuff and we're getting dragged into these like um, like World Economic Forum. We, I think it was the president of Uzbekistan tagged us in their uh, official press release. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, a, that was a big moment for us and um, on the world stage. <laughs> uh, there's so much, so much to go on there. Actually, I got it. We had Christian um, Westland Wickstrom um, on the on podcast last week and he was talking about in Africa, right, um, he's, he asked a question, he's like, oh, well, how, why is it that, um, you know, certain leaders in Africa are leaders? And he's like, uh, I'm like, I don't know. He's like, well, because they live in the presidential palace. So, you know, I mean, they just literally move into the presidential palace, start acting like the president, and therefore they become the president. They have these big conferences. They act like the president. They get photos of the world leaders. They have big chats, and then they just go back to living in the palace. <laughs> and so, therefore, they're the leader, right? Uh, and it's funny that, you know, in a certain way, memes are kind of popping up and just living in the palace, so to speak. And, <laughs> but actually, it, the, the question was... Um, um, at the at that uh, meme, conf meme token conference, um, I can't remember what it was called, um, you're up on Pamagami and you 
talked about the anatomy of a meme. What made a meme a meme? Because just before you'd mentioned that, you know, uh, memes are um, you know, the language of the internet. Can, can you actually get a pretty, like, really interesting kind of insight of that? Oh. Can you, whoever wants to take no. it. No, this is going. It also, sure. it also sets Nap up for a really good, um, you know, description of other things. So it, it's a bit of a, bit of a preface. So, like, um, if you're familiar with a, uh, a guy called Richard Dawkins, and, and the conference was Meme Global, by the Meme way. Global. It was with um, Infinex, so shout out can pump my bags um <laughs> <laughs> but it uh basically richard dawkins uh he invented the term meme and it was meant to be analogous to the term gene and the field of science genetics and the reason for that is he describes a meme as a self-replicating unit of culture and so if you think about genes they're these little bits of information programmed into dna and that's the medium through which we communicate intergenerationally. So it's it's the, you know, it's how inheritance comes about with, with our biological nature. But then on the cultural side, um, memes, which happen to travel really well on blockchains because they're intergenerational communication uh, systems, um, they're essentially the, the way that we communicate the culture through our generations. And memes being these self-replicating units of culture um, just have so many like parallels with biological um, thing, like the nature of biology and how, how we function and how we pass down, uh, you know, who we are to, to the people of the future, basically. So it's, it's kind of like a philosophical take, but the book was written in like 1976. So today's version of what people think are memes is actually quite different. You know, they just associate it with like a picture and some text and it's a joke. But an, another way to describe them would be like sticky ideas. So they're things that just proliferate through the culture. And that's usually because it's really easy to imitate. So, you know, an example being like Mog, which is like, you know, this idea of, I think it started as like men of God and all these other sorts of, um, you know, acronyms, but now it's just kind of like a verb. Like if you're strutting your stuff and you're winning at life, you're mogging. <laughs> so there's there's loads of things like that. If it's a verb, it definitely helps. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like Googling. <laughs> Pretty much. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the equivalent of a dank gene? <laughs> <laughs> a dank gene. That's a good question. I guess it's like a chiseled jawline. You got some eight pack abs. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more on like the mogging end of, of ge genetics, but yeah, at the other end, it could be, you know, something less uh, <laughs> desirable. All right. Uh, so we've got to, um, so where are we up to? Like, actually, um, I know before we're chatting, um, Nap, and you mentioned some, some, some learnings and hard lessons and learns like, things learn about the IMF launch and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. Um, so I think we've been around and I guess we're, we're builders. We've been building for ages. So this isn't our first rodeo. So we, we thought we were going to do things, you know, like, like we thought maybe a bit with a bit of hubris that we knew how to do things. Right. So we spent a bit of time. We had the idea. We spent a bit of time going around um, basically just like building up forward demand, making sure that, People actually wanted to use this thing. We felt pretty good that there was a lot of forward demand. We we then um, uh, we we then sort of you know have our lawyers on retainer who we sort of hit up to say is like, well, we want to you know we want to do a raise, but we don't want to do it through just you know private VCs. We want this to be you know like a thing that everyone can participate in. So please set up our structures. They did. Um, we hit the raise. Like unsurprisingly, we raised you know raised pretty quickly to our to our target. But that's really more a function of kind of our like personal relationships and you know position in the market i think uh um it did make you know some of the boys this was their first raise but i think me and gami were pretty clear that like we could probably like shut in the cup and you know raise what we raise so <laughs> it's uh um so what's I, the ticker <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know um uh, uh but uh uh and and then and then we thought we were pre-bull when we raised, right? We, you know, the sentiment was tops. Everyone was, uh, everyone was euphoric. Everyone was bidding everything. Um, in hindsight, this was pretty obvious, you know, uh, like, you know, longs are paying shorts, you know, 30% on funding. So uh, everyone thought we were just going to send. 
you know, we we're probably in hindsight due for a bit of a correction, but everyone thought we were going to send. And because of that, we then went from closing our raise to just deep build mode. We, we, we were of the view that if we don't build and launch ASAP, we're going to miss the, you know, miss this go from, you know, turn from pre-bull to bull and, you know, it's all for naught. Um, what ended up happening is we ended up crabbing for about, you know, when, like, when was consensus? Uh, oh, it's nearly three, two, two and a half months yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, consensus when we kicked off the raise, we've basically crabbed since then. Obviously, last Monday was uh, was was tough for, you know, a lot of people. Um, yeah, thoughts and prayers. And <laughs> <laughs> myself included. <laughs> and... Um, and and the net result was that the the reality is is that the IMF hasn't caught a bid, the the token hasn't caught a bid, and the product hasn't had the amount of traction that we were that we thought we would get, mm -hmm. and um and we rushed to to sort of get out there and launch, so that's that's kind of where we're at. But um, uh, and I think it's just a function of the fact that we created, we we did our I guess product development with the backdrop of pre bull, and we haven't. You know, we've sort of gone back into like, you know, crab and, and you know, sideways market. So there's just a bit of a, you know, everyone's just sort of sitting around trying to wait what the next move is mm -hmm. and work out where to go. So, um, so we, you know, I guess we, we sat down, we started thinking what's, um, how do we sort of package and frame our product and how do we then build from here to, to sort of build value going forward. And we realized that there's really two products. On one side, there's, um, you know, DGENs and uh, <laughs> uh, and on the other side is, um, I guess, people who just want yield, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a whole bunch of, like, I guess there's meme coin DGENs who just want to borrow against their meme coins, buy more, um, unlock liquidity. You know, our, our catch cry going into the, the thing was like, you know, DGENs are forced to choose between memes and dreams. Por que no los dos? <laughs> <laughs> That's why not both for the non-Spanish speakers. Uh, or, or people have never seen an old El Paso ad. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> What's that? No. <laughs> um, and and that was that was the exact right messaging pre-bull. But now there's uh, there's there is a large cohort of people who who are who want exposure to memes, but they don't want exposure by basically buying and holding spot Pepe. Yeah. They want their exposure to be essentially transformed from uh, spot exposure to yield exposure. Yeah, right. And that's really where we're focusing on. So we're, we're gonna you know, uh, focus on bolstering the liquidity side mm -hmm. of the IMF. We're gonna do that by um, essentially um, allowing people to deposit money and earn yield. And we'll get the yield by, um, by funding and volatility that exists currently in the meme market and we'll send that over to the the depositors and that that bolsters our liquidity and and our our thesis here is that we do that we do that well that's going to cause the flywheel in which um money will pay a good yield because you know memes are volatile but generally up and to the right um and then that will cause people to then unlock liquidity in their memes and uh and deposit more into the the yield bearing side and that fly will will, will kick us off so that is the that's the current thesis and that's what we're working on and, and and to be fair like we are introducing like DeFi to the meme coin market essentially for the first time so it's it's the kind of thing where despite a lot of meme coiners being like previously from the NFT cycle and being on chain maxis you know as opposed to using centralized products they're just not quite ready or familiar with some of these concepts and we did think that we'd have a lot of challenges around that but i think that's the beauty of building like a new primitive is we can package different products on top of it and it is really a new design space as well that we can leverage and come up with new products as we as we carry on so when it comes to like the marketing side of that obviously you guys know the degen market really well um so you can sort of speak to that crowd how do you go about sort of pitching it to people who are not so familiar with it particularly memes like you have those conversations with i don't know what you call the normies in this regard oh, <laughs> it's a term of endearment i promise but it, it's what is it now <laughs> <laughs> um tardfi <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then the degens of, of retards. So, so you know, it's so uh, retards, it's retards and tard fire. Yeah, so yeah. we're we're building retard fire. <laughs> <laughs> we're pivoting from meme fire to retard fire. So, yeah. um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Can this can this make the podcast? Yes, Are we allowed to say this? Like I'm it's not, we're not cutting a single thing out. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Um, but we we think of it as a term of endearment because there's uh like th- there are normies, right? There are people who just don't um well, like there's people who barely even get Bitcoin, right? They're not gonna understand this. But there are a lot of people, surprisingly, maybe, that understand that this is a narrative, understand that it's uh it's something that you gotta like understand is something that they want exposure to, but just don't know how to go about doing it, and and uh, and they know that they like they know they're in this camp, right? So it's it's a surprisingly easy sell. So there's there are people who are like, well, you know, pre bull because they wanted to essentially DCA out of their holdings. They were kind of like, yeah, of course we understand it. We'll like get our Pepe, we'll pair it with money, we'll like farm the protocol rewards, we'll create LP, and they're kind of now like, yeah, now's not the time to do it. But there's a whole bunch of people who are also just like, we just want now that memes are a bit lower and there's a bit of a correction, we want exposure, but we don't know how to like, like you know, to put it bluntly, is like there is no way I can send out a LP investor report that says that we're holding Pepe. <laughs> or Harry Potter, Obama, Sonic 10, Eno. <laughs> <laughs> or Mog, right? Like as in we just cannot do it or ship. Like as in like these these are just like as in as much as we know our investors will thank us when the returns come, we cannot hold these assets and we cannot write this in our investor report without looking like retards. <laughs> so we're not going to do it. But if you give us an angle to be able to um, bank it as yield, then sure, right? Like that's fine. Like as in whether you'll come from is is somewhat uh, like, you know, they can talk about it coming from volatility in the market and the way we structured our money product. Uh, well, this is pretty hot off the press. We literally you know, brainstorming this yesterday and I spent yesterday night in Jupyter Notebooks trying to make sure that I wasn't smelling my own shit and thinking it smells like roses. But we're essentially positioning as a, like, it doesn't matter where memes go. Mm-hmm. As long as it doesn't crap, if it goes up or down, the the product will return yield. And uh, so as long as there's volatility, mm-hmm. which you can almost be guaranteed there's volatility. Um, so to a lot of, like the reframing for a lot of people who are, uh, in the position where they would love this exposure but really can't justify it is basically is like, well, you don't have to now make a directional bet of long or short. Is like you can yield farm and then as long as there's vol, which is almost guaranteed, you'll the, the yield will be paid out. Like that's where the real yield comes from. And, uh, and that is something that you can, uh, I guess, justify yeah. to, your, to your LP base and justify <clears throat> to your investor base and, and – uh, or justify to the family office that you're backing. So that's yeah. kind of where we're hunting. It's so funny, right? Um, and I know your background is actually, you were a quant trader. So you did a bunch of that stuff like from, from respectable investment banks. Yeah. <laughs> what, it's not like you just made this stuff up. You actually went and crunched the numbers on a lot of this thing. Un- of this un- unfortunately, true. I did not think my career would get to the point where I'm basically doing quant modeling on Pepe. But you know, <laughs> here we are. Here we are. <laughs> like it's, it's so fascinating. Like the, the framing of things, um, you know, there's, there's some serious numbers behind even the stuff that you've looked at. Uh, we were talking before about just how much modeling had gone into to what you, you've done. Um, and people just probably see Tartfy and, and sort of turn off. <laughs> well, understandably. But I guess it's so much. That is a term it. of endearment for us, to be honest. Like, as in, like, and, 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 for people, and, and for people to sort of identify as such. as Because it's, it's admitting that, like, you are living in this world, but, you, but you know, you're, you're silly enough to know that there's probably some value that you're missing and you want exposure to it. So. Which Aussies are almost uniquely good at, right? Like we're really self-deprecating. We mm-hmm. sort of like embrace the tall poppy syndrome, all these sorts of things. And the market recognises Australia for being really like outperforming <coughs> our size as a country. You know, like look at the Olympic medal Reagan. tally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at Raygun, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, doing the, um, the whatever the moves were. <laughs> 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 There were there were a lot of ticker ray guns actually. Um, after after that, there was there were loads of coins trading with with, with ray gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's crazy. It's, <laughs> it gets back to your point. Like sometimes just the uh, any or a meme is a meme, and it, like once it grabs hold, it kind of takes fire, and you know it's just they're kind of better off 
for the fact that she did it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else thinks it's uh, embarrassing. Hey, um, I was going to say, like, um, just on getting back to some of that marketing and sort of that viral stuff you did, um, again, we had to touch on sort of the work you always did with Nouns. I guess that was some some really some early piece for you. It was a really successful project, or a continually successful project, and you've done heaps of cool stuff. And there's lots go going on there. There's obviously, there's the meme that factor, there's the NFT factor, there's the DAO, which you're doing heaps you guys now has done a heap of cool stuff yeah 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 um, I'm, I'm glad that people know that because um a lot of the time i've spent in nouns has not like been in australia but you're right it's it's very much uh about the memes and the proliferation and i think that's why like it was a natural progression from nouns to like paying attention to meme coins so um yeah, like Nouns, um, you know, it started in August of 2021. So we like just turned um, three years old, which is crazy. Um, we've been through all the trials and tribulations of being a DAO. Like we've been attacked by uh, the risk-free value traders, you know, these DAO raiders that come and buy up your tokens and rug half your treasury. <laughs> and, um, you know, we've, we've, we've done a, a lot of cool projects culturally and, quite amazingly, you know, over the, the founders of Nouns hate when I say this, but, um, you know, that there's been over a hundred million US dollars in primary sales of our NFTs through daily auctions. And whatever has happened with those funds, you know, it's been purely up to the token holders. And so it's kind of this like experiment in memetics and this idea of how do you make ideas spread. Mm. And one thing that really caught on um, big with Nouns was the glasses, you know, the noggles, the nouns goggles. And one of the early experiments that I did in nouns was um, I, I was funded to create NARS, which is a, a fork of nouns that focuses on extreme sports. And we've gone from like sponsoring some athletes that I was friends with to working with Bob Burnquist, like the number two guy in the history of skateboarding, basically after Tony Hawk. And now he's a member of nouns and contributing, you know, it's like it's this crazy... Um, this crazy pool of talent naps now in nouns. So, you know, it's up only from here, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, one thing that like just rather than shilling my own uh, work, like the, there's something in nouns that was an early sign of like what's really important in the meme market. And it was the noggles catching on throughout everything else. Like there were like hundreds if not thousands of NFT collections released after Nouns where there'd be a Nouns glasses accessory and it, it was just popping up everywhere. And then we've got like Instagram accounts like Meet Quack, which has like millions of followers and billions of views. And we've got GIFs on Giphy with like nearly 3 billion views and it, it's all just putting the glasses on stuff. And so I was paying attention to the meme coins and mog was at like five million market cap or something and a friend of mine mike three um zero x mike three on twitter if you want to check him out he was working on a rebrand for mog that he just out of the kindness of his own heart reached out to a team and said i think we can make this a thing with the pit viper sunglasses and he was really into nouns and it's obvious where the inspirations lie mm -hmm. and and through our conversations I got to know that like what Mog was and 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 what it could be and I, I bought a bag and got in early and was just like it feels just like the nouns glasses again but maybe NFTs weren't the best way to capture value uh, around this kind of cultural activity yet like maybe it will be and it's a longer term play but with coins everything's so much uh, it's speed run, right? Because you've got automate, automated market makers, liquidity pools, people can trade anytime they like it in size. And so we started to see these things proliferate and just everything that I learned in my time at Nouns has sort of gone into a few plays in meme coins and then directly into the IMF. And even the network is incredible that I got from Nouns. Like I went to uh, Austin, Texas for consensus this year and just like dropped a message in a couple of group chats I'm in and like an hour later I'm at dinner with Hong Kim, the CTO of Bitwise and I'm just like, you know, like we know each other from Nouns but I'd only ever really known him as Noun40 
Mm. And um, <laughs> and like he's he's already like doxed in, uh, with that, like so I'm not like revealing anything there. But but it was just cool like to spend time with these people and be able to discuss like what it is that we're working on and thinking about it like as as much as it's all a big joke, it's like so is money itself, right? Like like everything starts out as like a weekend hobby where, you know, like neck beards and <laughs> nerds are like <laughs> fiddling in the basement. Um, but then they get to a point where they become serious. And I think that's what like money itself is really interesting. Uh, it was written um, Debt the First 5,000 Years recently and it talks about like how debt precedes money and money is just a way of quantifying debt. And it's all just a belief system, right? Like fiat currency, fiat literally meaning like because we say so <laughs> and and why can like why can't other assets have that characteristic especially when they're pure and not making promises that they can't deliver so it's yeah it's been this huge whirlwind and just trying to bring that value to the team and be able to say like here's what I learned and that's kind of what we've all been doing you know it's it's and it's exciting to do this out of Australia because previously I'd always just worked with overseas teams and Fortunately, Sydney's becoming, you know, it's becoming a hub in, in a sense. Like, it's really cool. Yeah, so you think Sydney's growing? I mean, is, is, you, I'm sure you guys travel to lots of crypto events. Are you going to Token this year, I presume, in Singapore? You guys will be there? Not not Token, but um, DevCon and um, possibly Nounsfest. Okay. Just trying to li- line up, uh, yeah, li- line up with uh, Garmi, actually, because he needs to negotiate whether he can get out of the country or not. <laughs> <laughs> just make too many commitments as usual. <laughs> Double booked yourself. I'm a yes man. <laughs> so, so on on on, like on the Sydney scene. So you think uh, Sydney's doing? Because like you travel overseas, you travel to you know Hong Kong. There's obviously a big Web three thing kicking off there. You go to Singapore, feels like lots is happening. Um, and in Australia, sometimes feels a little bit left. Particularly Sydney, kind of maybe lives feels a little bit left behind. But you reckon there's more stuff happening? Yeah. Um, during the bear, this. This telegram, one of our one of our colleagues actually. Well, I don't want to say he kicked it off, but he was pretty instrumental in making it happen. Um, a telegram group where all the Oz builders, all, all literally is called Oz builders, you know, and uh, have just slowly and surely uh, like joined in, and it's it's not a it's not a big sort of like shill group. It's literally people who are like in the trenches, building in the space, are there chatting about what they're doing and 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 where they're pushing and what they're thinking. And it's it's kind of really like, it's probably the most valuable Telegram group that I'm part of, you know, not from not for Alpha for like great trades, but just for, you know, the people and the, the culture that's sort of showing that there is a lot of people here and just connecting with everyone who's done, you know, quite frankly, really awesome stuff, but you don't really get to hear or see about it because it's, yeah, they're involved in like this DAO there or this project here, and and um and they're all working, you know, like they're they're one piece working with like an international team as as we are with the IMF as well. But it's uh, but this is where everyone is like congregated and chatting. So it's it feels like it's turning, and it feels like we're we're also organizing a bit. Um, uh, like you know, two cycles ago, there was no. Like there was nothing like this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we have Upside, which is investing pretty heavily in um, in in the space, and has brought together a bunch of people to to do exactly that, and mm-hmm. and uh, and you know, Greg hosting events and sort of pushing that forward. Mm-hmm. So there is a, it does feel like there's a um, there's a change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. That's that's a another thing too with the Aussie scene is um, internationally a lot of people don't realise how many like successful founders are from Sydney and Melbourne. Mm. So like Zora, which is the most used NFT protocol period, um, which just continues to grow, is by uh, founded by Jacob Horn from Sydney. His dad, um, Peter Horn, is also from Sydney, uh, cryptography guy, OG in the space. Uh, you got like Boki Puba, who was, you know, writing code, and just publishing it on GitHub that's now used like widely across loads of different crypto uh, protocols. He was like the first person to claim punks, crypto punks that wasn't like part of the Lava Labs team. You've got, you know, Kane Warwick, obviously, um, founder of Haven and then Synthetics and now Infinex. And then 
loads of other people, sorry that I'm not naming you because there's no time, but it's just like much like in the Olympics, we just overperform. Like we got loads of gold medals. Mm. And I think that that is a change that I would really like to see in Australia with the scene is for us to get more support locally. Like rather than just putting all the money to digging holes in the ground, let's mm. like, you know, build some real stuff that's like future value as opposed to what's going to run out. You know? Yeah. So you reckon the challenge is just attracting capital and, and getting the, what institutional money there is here interested in it more? Or oh, I'm not sure because I think attracting capital hasn't been a problem because crypto more so than anything else, you can basically attract capital from anywhere in the world. It's mm. it's kind of mm. the Aussies who aren't allocating are missing out, really. Like right. as in it's uh so I'm pretty confident that the markets will Will, uh, will you know? Will narrow over time as people mm. realise that yeah. there are returns to be made, and then this is this is a good place to sort of you know prospect for them. But it's it's probably just it's it's almost on the other side. It's almost like feeling space emotional, like just actually saying that, like having having something a bit more public, and you know people supporting the builders. And coming out and saying that, yep, we're going to support the builders, and it's uh, it's not some little fringe thing, but it, it's something where we think there's going to have value being built, like tech more broadly, crypto more specifically, is is what we're really missing, mm. and yeah, and it's what we've missed, and I feel like we're getting more of it, and and uh, and I hope we get even more, like not to um, not to throw throw shade on um, the, the the black tie event that we went to. Um, and the you know the APAC crew, the blockchain APAC crew that put it all together, um, and you know I've said this to them directly as well. But there was there was a lot of lawyers and feds on that list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, People uh, actually doing the doing uh, the builders. Yeah, yeah, like as in you know like we were missing Bucky Bo- Poobah, we we're missing Daniel Bar, we were, you know we we're yeah. like you know we we're missing um, you know you know Greg Oak who's like running upside down. Is we we're missing um, uh, you know. Like, oh. yeah, like Mark Mumford, who was running, you know, he runs Oz DeFi. Like, as in, there's people who are like doing a lot of grassroots, uh, grassroots work, and and them being sort of, you know, both showcased and you know, somewhat like protected mm. yeah. to to try and like you know allow the space for that to happen. Because what happens with most Aussie builders is is uh, and you know, it's a bit sad, but like because there's no clarity here, you basically end up you know, restructuring in a way where you're in a jurisdiction where there is clarity and you just paid a salary through an Australian proprietary limited, right? Mm. Like, and there's no other way to do it, right? And, yeah. and we hear that so often, yeah. And yeah. that's kind of silly, right? Like, as in it's like, why why are other countries sort of capturing the the value because you can't actually do it here in a reasonable fashion? Yeah, and yeah it keeps coming back to, I mean, Australia, we know because we've kind of, we're not victims of our success, but we can just dig iron out of the, minerals out of the ground and export it and make lots of money and we don't worry about anything else which is such a shame <laughs> when we're clearly yeah. punching above our weight ray gun style for uh <laughs> for doing. Yeah. The, there is an aspect of that like about it almost being like there are a lot of builders who deserve a pat on the back and and just to receive it would would be a big deal um even just for the for the sake of like from an economic standpoint um if you, i bet if you just went into the Oz builders group and fetched all the code written by the devs in there and then factored in how many dollars of value their code has generated, it would be a lot of money. Like it'd be in the billions, tens of billions, you know, it's like, yeah. it's just, it's just a shame that like the Australian market misses out on exposure to the cool things that mm. amazing, incredible people are doing. Yeah. And, and basically you think that more or less kind of boils down to there's, we've got the talent, we've got the ability, it's all there, it's just, and got the money. I guess with, like, a great thing about crypto is it does, everything's international now. There's no, it's borderless, right? Yeah. So the only real challenge is how do you get those guys to go, no, stay here, build here, regular, everything's going to be fine, you're not going to get sued for building something. Is that kind of, it boils down to that regulation piece, just the clarity around what they can do or can't do. Is that the thing? Like, what can, what, and I guess my real question is what can we kind of tangibly do to convince these guys to, and, and girls to stay here and build? Yeah, clarity is definitely like top of the list, um, but but because crypto's 
crypto and tech more broadly is international and the network effects aren't really location based. They're mm. kind of like they happen in Discord and Telegram groups as opposed to in San Fran. Mm. Being in the, the location you choose to live in is kind of more based on like, I guess, your own life preference as well as um, maximizing the value out of what you create. Mm. So there's both regulatory clarity and also just an element of pragmatism that needs to come with how you approach it. Like, uh, yeah, if we're, we're sort of turning the dial up to 10 on everything that we think is good about financial systems, right? Like as in we think free and open markets are good, like dialed up to 10. We think unlocking liquidity is really good on anything and everything as long as, you know, someone's willing to do it, dial that up to 10. Mm. Um, you know, we think being permissionless and just everyone being able to access it is really good, dial that up to 10. So there's an aspect of, um, I guess, just more generally, if you're going to talk about regulation, government sort of realizing that this is what's happening. And then there is an arb that is jurisdictions that allow it is basically where the value flows. So there's an opportunity to like, you know, balance that out, have the value flow here. And in any time frame that matters, that's going to be super beneficial for mm. the country. And yeah, the the short sightedness is kind of lost along the way, I think. And then that's, uh, that's, that's the real sort of like issue that is, uh, that we're fighting against. Short sightedness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is a tough it's one. It's almost like crypto is a dirty word, but if it's sports gambling, <laughs> yeah. you can basically put it on a cereal box. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. There seems to be some kind of, I don't know, you can call it like a meme of seriousness. I don't know what you call it, but like, for example, like you go NFTs, everyone just kind of laugh them off. But like you go, oh, well, let's have real world tokenization. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, sweet. <laughs> or like, you know, yeah, we can we can do that. So that's, yeah. you know what I mean? Or like, uh, you can't call it crypto or blockchain, but you can call it DLT or something like that. And all of a sudden you're like, yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, what, is, what does it take to just, like, you need some on, kind of meme to like on, make on, things on, serious. Like, honestly, I'm not sure who said this, but my view is that uh, everyone who, eventually everyone who, you know, I'm going to say it's jobs, right? Like as in, you know, when he was sort of like questioned on like, oh, like this thing has a keyboard, like are people going to use a keyboard or, or doesn't have a keyboard? And it was kind of like everyone who like thinks that's important is eventually going to die, right? <laughs> and um, and I'm kind of in the same boat. It's like everyone who thinks, like everyone who can't use a wallet is eventually going to die, right? Like as in there's just like, as in this is just the, the natural course of life, like no one lives forever. So, and and there is no there is no real incentive for incumbents for disruption because you know they're set like you know they've they've done their hard work they've got their red capture they mm -hmm. they you know they got like their consistent yield coming through it's like like you know good on them right like as in like my dad's not going to go and buy pepe um like he's, he's he's doing all right like you know he 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 bought property when it was basically like nothing. He's paid it all off. His effective yield is not 4% with a lot of debt or whatever it is in Sydney. It's probably like 30%, right? Like as in he's a, you're like, he's not doing anything. Like he doesn't need to, right? And and I think the, like this this sort of pandering or like people being like, oh, we should call it DLT. And otherwise I kind of just find it cringe mm. um, uh, personally. And it's like, yeah, I get it. And I get like, as in we're trying to like convince people and we're trying to be like skeuomorphic, but also, innovation doesn't happen in the old stodgy tech, right? Like as in or everything that was awesome about phones happened because of mobile phones, not yeah. because of wired phones, right? That's true. Yeah. Um, and it's it's going to be the same again. Like everything that's awesome that's going to happen in finance. I, I'm a big finance maxi when it comes to blockchain. And, uh, and everything's going to all the awesome innovation that we're going to get in finance is not going to happen on traditional banking rails. It's going to happen on blockchain. And 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 that is, and, and I, I take a very long-term view on this stuff, which is why I would love like, you know, a bit more like, you know, the, the government also or, or whatever it might be sort of like realizing and taking this long-term view. But there's, and we see this play out in so many industries, you know, and we've seen this play out in tech, um, uh, Canva and, and Atlassian, you know, great companies, right? Like as in no doubt they're great companies, but their insane growth attributed is to how much do you attribute that to a great product? How much do you attribute Canva's like meteoric growth to the fact that every year a bunch of 13 year olds turn 14 and need to make some stuff online, need to, need, need to, need to, mm. need, need to, need to be involved and yep. sign up to Canva. Right. Yep. And, and, uh, so I'm very much of the view that just like, just in general, just 
time is going to mm. just uh, cause enough of a crossing of the chasm. Yeah. And it's anything that happens at the moment is just sort of like chop on our way there. And and we've seen this play out in, in, in tech. We've seen this play out in basically every major innovation that's happened across human history. So there's going to, there will, there will, you know, it'll be tough, but we'll reach a point where all the innovation happens on blockchain. And Australia is poised for a massive transfer of wealth from the boomers to the zoomers, right? Like we're heavily weighted boomer in this country. So there's, there's loads of opportunity and we need to make the opportunity available to the people yeah. as opposed to just offshore. No, that, that's a, no, I, I really dig that take. That's the first time I've heard someone say, we don't need to pander to the old crew anymore. We can just steam further ahead in our own four drone way yeah. and battle or die. <laughs> like there's, a, <laughs> there's, there's kind of a reason that like, and, and you can call it financial nihilism, but it's, it's worth digging into. It's like if, you, if you're 19, right, and you got, you know, 5K, 10K, right? What are you going to do with that five day, five k, ten k? Are you going to are you going to bid up property, which is the boomer asset class, right, for what's looking like a real return? And they might not be able to articulate this, right? But you know, property without leverage is looking like a real return of like you know, best case ten percent, probably five, right? Like as in given the corrections that have happened, it'll probably mean revert to basically just like you know, outpacing real inflation, right? over any long period of time. Okay, on insane leverage, that's still pretty good. But like, that's the Ponzi, right? Like as in, are they gonna, are they gonna do that with their five or 10K? Yeah. Or are they gonna go and, um, and, and buy Bitcoin, which might double, right? Or are they gonna like buy Pepe, which might 10X, right? Like as in, which one is actually a more meaningful bet to take? And, and it's easy for, you know, quite frankly, us who have like, you know, like made it on the other side and I'm doing all right and like, you know, a bit further on in our careers to so like look at that and be like, well, that's that's ridiculous. Why would you go buy, why would you go buy Mog, right? Yeah. But if you've got 5K, the bet is actually pretty clear. It's like you can sort of like screw it away and essentially have the system like eat it. Like, you know, you could, you could be safe, like the safe move for someone who's 19 is to probably buy Bitcoin, right? Or if you actually want to try and like, you know, take a bit of a swing, then um, further down the risk curve is where you're going to go. So there's a reason these new assets are going to be popping up and they're always going to be popping up because once, like, like you're going to, yeah, you know, the younger you are, the, in, the more intuitively you just go for the larger, larger swing bets. Mm -hmm. And, and the, you know, it's almost like paradoxically, the less you have to lose, the more you're going to swing harder, mm -hmm. right? And that, that is, that plays out all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah, actually, I, I love this take. Um, I mentioned Hong Kim earlier. He he compared meme coins to um, sports and sports betting. And obviously, Australia are a huge nation of sports bettors. And the difference is that in meme coins, um, rather than betting on a team uh, of 12 people, you're betting on a community of thousands. <laughs> and they can essentially go from not just being part of not just like betting on a community but being part of it and being able to impact its performance so it's almost like instead of a team of 12 it's a team of thousands and you can just tap in whenever you like and contribute it's it's in my mind like that's a much safer bet yeah. <laughs> right as, as, as a seasoned meme professional what um what, 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 what kind of what what do you look for like for longevity like what when you were looking at a meme and you can go i'm sure you have a better sense for going this one's gonna go or that this one doesn't or how would you look at it? Yeah, um, just to preface that, like GAMI is an acronym for Globally Accredited Meme Investor. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I think the, the only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, so I know we keep talking about Ray Gandhi, but like I heard that I heard the story that the reason she got selected was that um, when the Olympics, Australian Olympic body, whatever, they go, oh shit, we need to get some, we need to get some athletes for this particular sport. They go to the top body. They go to the top accredited meme investor, or in this case, break dancing. They're like, there was there was no break dancing, I guess, society or you know, association. So the story I heard, someone can comment, I guess, but like she just went, oh well, I'll just make my own. So then she was like, well, 
here I'm the association and you're looking at the best champion. I don't know if that happened, but if it did. Well, if, if that did, that is awesome, by the way. That's some hustle. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was, like hat tip right. if that is what you did. Like, you know. <laughs> well, as, as the... Pure speculation, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> as someone who started a DAO that literally uh, funds people in action sports with breakdancing being one, um, we, we had, uh, if, if you go through the official Olympics Instagram account and watch all their reels, you'll actually see one where during the qualifying for the breaking, there is a young man wearing a pair of Nouns glasses and, and representing our community. And that featured in the official stuff. So um, th this leads to something um, actually insightful. But the <laughs> the the when you think about like... Um, when you think about speculating on memes, um, I have this idea called the cryptomimesis thesis. And so like... <laughs> when, <laughs> it's a mouthful. So I'm already impressed. Yeah. <laughs> so um, just like with genes, um, it, it, they... they or Sorry, just like in biology, you have this, um, this phenomena described by Manfred Eigen, who Eigen Layer was named after. Here you go. I believe so. <laughs> um, he came up with this concept called hypercycles. And it's basically like what like minimum amount of information, for example, DNA, can a cell or some sort of organism go through a series of iterations and do it in such a way that it's like a positive reinforcing loop. And the same can be applied to ideas, but the difference is with genes. I don't know if with my head of whatever's on, if you'll see this, but um, <laughs> I'll, I'll do it out here. So if, if you have two circles of a Venn diagram coming together, that's, that's a person, right? You've got, you've got like two sets of genetic makeup coming together and where they overlap is, you know, the, the creation of a new human. With ideas, there's no limit to how many circles make up the Venn diagram. So you have a very complex system. And if you read a book like uh, Non-Zero by Robert Wright, you'll learn that, um, that uh, basically positive sum prevails and, and it alludes to this idea of hyper cycles. So you'll start to see that the real game at play here is an imitation game. And so when you think about something like breakdancing or a more uh, prominent extreme uh, sport or action sport, cultural sport, street sport, whatever you want to call it, uh, skateboarding is a fantastic example. So the skateboard is a mimetic icon, right? People see it, they know that it's skateboarding. It's also something you can impress yourself upon and it has a shape that has remained unchanged for the better part of around 30 years. And it's because they somehow just like almost nailed it pretty early on. And with this one board, you can do hundreds, if not thousands of different tricks. And so what that is, is it's a vehicle for self-expression. And that's how I look at memes. It's like if you see a cult starting to form, that's because it's easy to imitate one another. And there's a really good video about this concept uh, called Leadership Lessons by Derek Sivers, which you'll find on uh, YouTube. And it's a dancing guy on a hill at a, a music festival and he looks ridiculous. But <laughs> he gets his first follower who oh, yeah, yeah. jumps and in start and starts doing the same thing and then the whole crowd piles in. And yeah. it's not yeah. the leader who's the most important, it's the first follower. So you want to look for leaders who just, they seed an idea and then they step out of the way and they don't make it about themselves. And that's essentially like the secret to finding, um, you know, good things to speculate on yeah, in right. the meme market. Bitcoin. Exactly. It's like that is the, the prime OG example. Like Satoshi got out of the way, right? Early, early. Probably some argue too early, but it was right because look where we are now. So yeah, yeah. wow. Yeah. That there we go. We've got, we've got a formula now for investing in Bitcoin, <laughs> and and it's worth a lot. Like take all your models and app and throw them out. This, <laughs> this this well, you know, we're we're packaging me, this up in. Me, this is why me and Garmin <laughs> work well together because Garmin brings the feeling space, and I think I bring the, I so, bring the models, and you know the. The, the two in balance, the, the yin, yin and yang is yeah. where we think we uh, like, you know, we balance each other out and really, really push it. But this this point that you made is that is like cults, cults create culture. Yeah, like that is like architects make architecture. So why not <laughs> cults make culture? But I guess nature loves mathematics and there's probably there's probably is a formula to work there's, out the, the 
but 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 this this thing that that like you real like maybe but like the cult creator culture is kind of like is the is the key and the leader getting out of the way and the first follower mm -hmm. um but it's this is you can almost draw this analogy back to basically just you know evolution as well which is you've got all the pumped up fun shitters but they're kind of the organisms that don't make it right like as in they they exist they they live for a bit but they don't um, they don't profilerate the blah, 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 blah. Yeah, <laughs> that word. <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, they um, they don't spread. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll dumb it down. I'll use a simple word. Yeah, yeah. I was hoping you yeah. use the wrong pro word, like prophylactic or something. <laughs> oh, proliferate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the word I was trying to say. It's like I'm not I'm not really that smart. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't England well. Um, <laughs> um, uh but but it, it is that they don't they don't spread but the ones that spread the ones that are, are the ones that catch a bit and they're the ones that sort of have managed to pass on their you know genetic material and and yeah the first follower being able to being able to play along is uh, and this is you know one of gami's great lines where he said uh meme coins are kind of the purest expression of a dao like there's no roadmap. You buy your bag and you work for it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is like and, a, I guess and, like in biology we had like a Cambrian yeah. explosion, which is the same yeah. thing, right? It's a very yeah. The Cambrian explosion. Of, the Cambrian yeah. explosion means that most aren't going to make it, but the ones yeah. that do are the are the ones that sort of and 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 I probably I'm I'm not as uh, talented, so I I'm not going to you know like my entire strategy here is I just buy the stuff that Gummy and Clout buys. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're plugged in, you know, what, for whatever it is, they're mainlining the feeling space of the market and CT and they're able to just divine. They'll be like, yep, this one, this is where the culture is going to end up. And, um, and I'm just too autistic for that crap. So <laughs> I'm just like, yep, okay, sure. <laughs> we're we're <laughs> sensitive new age DJs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is glorious. <laughs> oh, well, nice. Well, then where, where to then, guys? Like, um, I guess um, the bull market feels like it's just kind of it's trying to get going. It just hasn't really kind of kicked off in earnest yet. We've kind of got a few false starts. and But, I mean, overall, the market still seems really healthy. I mean, we saw, obviously, last week, we saw the dip. We had a couple of new starters in our team. And they're thinking, looking at their desk, going, do I have to leave today? Or like, <laughs> oh, everyone, my God. Everyone else, everyone else is just kind of like, this is just it's like a regular day. <laughs> yeah. um, of course, it's a healthy market because, I mean, dips get bought up really quickly and the volume yeah. comes straight back out. And so we know we're still in a fairly healthy market. And I guess there's some, I guess some, hopefully some tail winds globally, sort of speaking. Um, but uh, where's, where's it kind of for you guys? Like, what, what's your kind of roadmap then for the next? I know you don't have a roadmap because you're just doing stuff. But. <laughs> no, we do. We, as in, like, I guess we, you know, we listen to the market, right? We want to build what the market wants us to build. So if, if we didn't think when we first built it all and we just rushed to just build everything and launch it, if we didn't think we were pre-bull, we would have almost certainly done this, which is what we're going to do now, which is um, we're, we've, been, we've been in crypto long enough that we don't actually bother with, uh, with, with token price. We know that like, you know, markets in the short term are a voting machine and long term are a weighing machine. So, you know, we're, we're confident we'll be, you know, we'll build value and we'll, you know, we'll put on some bulk, you know, we're in our bulking cycle at the moment as it would be. So it's, uh, um, you know, we've got a full weight set at the gym. So it's, you know, bench presses, squats and protein shakes. That's the, <laughs> that's the, that's the regime. We're um, all going to make it bros. <laughs> uh, but, but, but it is, it, it is to build up the weight of liquidity for people um, for the um, for the side of the market that wants exposure to means but is not going to hold spot. So it right. is it is essentially deposit USDC, earn earn real yield and a whole bunch of token emissions, and and that's going to build the that's going to build the base in which when we do flick into something that looks more pre bull and bull and there's a bit more FOMO and then there's a bunch of DGENs who are kind of like either like I guess. Fundamentally, you know, on one side we need liquidity, on the other side we need borrow demand, mm. and we think about it as like borrow demand only comes when you know leverage is just a way to travel in time, right? Either like you know into the future to to essentially borrow from the future and build into that value, or into the past to essentially buy in at a value. Like you know, it goes to three k. You wish you bought a two k. Mm. You, you know, you buy a bunch of three k, borrow against it, buy more, right? Like as in. I'm sure you've taken on more risk, but you've also, you know, increased your exposure without having any more capital at hand necessarily. So 
crab market is not a time when anyone wants to you know travel in time. So as we get to pre-ball, totally. we expect that there will be the FOMO that we saw when we thought we were in pre-ball last time will kick in again. There'll be a bunch of people who want to you know essentially realize that they're under or underexposed to memes, mm. um, want to travel in time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you're, uh, you're right though it's incredible and we see that yeah. I mean at the exchange we see that all the time it's the uh, the crab walk is like the worst period like it's it's the volatility that brings people out like everyone sits on the sideline until it gets wild you know yeah <laughs> yeah like you know we're irrational monkey brain idiots at the <laughs> end of the day right so it's the the non and and you see this not just like as in not just in our protocol but you see this across the market um yeah. Uh, I, was, I was looking at this yesterday where generally um, yeah, longs pay shorts, generally speaking. Uh, at the moment, though, if you wanted to go long doge, you're paid 20%, 25% in funding, which is insane, right? Like it is insane in, in a and, – and that's a function of a crab market, right? Mm-hmm. Like as in it's, all, it's uh, you know, you can go 20x long BTC at like 7% or something, right? Um, as of yesterday, maybe it's a bit more today. But it is insane. It is insane that there's, um, which just means all the leverage has been wiped. Everyone's risk averse. Everyone's just waiting around to to see when the reflexive loop sort of like kicks in. And then and then we'll be, we'll be going bananas again. So, Yeah, and we look forward to the day that leverage is no longer a dirty word. Because <laughs> we, we've been talking like, we we had a bit of a recharge day recently. We went down to the Marn Pool in oh, right. uh, Maroubra, cold plunge, you know, soak up some salt and sun. And got then, our nails done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got a, had a massage. Jeez. Got, um, <laughs> Talk us to this day. This is so oh, it was amazing. It was Friday. Nice day. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Friday. Sh- oh, shout out the park. They'll, they'll understand. Um <laughs> There was <laughs> there was this idea that we were floating around just like, you know, with crypt, trying to make crypto user experience less scary, there's been a lot of attention on stuff like account abstraction. So we're talking about like what's leverage abstraction look like and what are all these different products where you can get the benefits of, of what debt has to provide without all the scary, you know, sharp teeth and all that sort of stuff. So we're just, we're just trying to be really receptive to the market and like that's how how you, you trade it as well, right? So, tra- trading our our ideas and our capital and our time, and just trying to work it out one day at, yeah. at a time. How do we, how do we get in on your next uh, R and day? <laughs> we'll we'll put out a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should start a therapy group. <laughs> a therapy, a th- yeah, yeah. I know. Everyone in, everyone in crypto needs a day off to. To, yeah. to recover from the madness. It's, a- Apoholics uh, Anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Sounds good. Like, how, do we work, how do we work in the question, am I retarded? Like, that's- <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and is that a bad thing? <laughs> and and um, I, like, when we were shilling, you know, the IMF, when we first sort of like came up with the idea and we were talking to people is like we we got the range of sort of responses to essentially like this sounds insane on like who'd want to borrow off memes. Um, and it didn't matter how analytical I came to the conversation. It was just like this, this basically just uh, emotional like um, recoil away from the idea. And, and uh and I came with it pretty analytically. I was just like, Do you, did you know that Pepe has basically had the same funding rate, more or less within an order of magnitude as ETH over the last year? Its volatility has been about the same as ETH <laughs> over the last year. Like as in, it's this is this is not an asset, like as in you think about it as like, you're imagining a pump dot fund shitter. You're imagining one of the Cambrian explosions that don't make it, that like shoot up to 500 mil market cap, have like really low liquidity and then shoot back down again, mm-hmm. right? This is like, we're not talking about those assets. We're talking about assets that look like them, but they're the, they're the generations that have made it. They've, they've, um, they've spread, right? They've, true, got, yeah. they've got they're cults. They're full, full-blown right? spe- genus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they've got cults, right? As in, as in yeah. they've got cults. They, haven't, um, they, they still haven't made it mainstream. You know, like as in you're not you're not getting anyone on CNBC sort of like shilling Pepe, <laughs> but at a there was a point in time where you weren't getting anyone on CNBC shilling Bitcoin, right? Shilling ETH, like as in it's a, it's it's a, 
Pepper hasn't crossed the chasm. May, or maybe it has cost the chasm, but it's still in the early adopter stage, right? Like as in it hasn't like, it hasn't got to the late majority yet, which Bitcoin and ETH have probably made it to. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there is no reason why, or the, there, there is no, I can't think of any logical reason why that you would want to be an arbiter of the market, as in the market decides what it wants to do. And, and if an asset has value, it seems logical to me that you should be able to unlock liquidity from it. Mm. Um, and and I, I personally think that DeFi is basically this, uh, the, the magic killer app of ETH and blockchains. And it's, it is, uh, it is, it is literally 10x better and 10x cheaper than, than the current sort of system, especially if you're not already established within the current system. And there are people, there are, there are, um, there are people who have made a bag of Pepe, believe that it's going to go a bit higher, but have lives to live, right? Like, you know, the ability to unlock liquidity is, is kind of like, yeah, you could say that we're being irresponsible by offering it, but the the mechanics of the system work. Like as in if the price goes down, they get liquidated, you know, it, it all winds down to zero. There's no bad debt in the system. You know, we can really like lean into this fact that the nature of credit has changed. Um, yep. My, sorry, I was going to say, there's. A, have you heard of the... The, the five C's of credit is that is that something that has uh, popped up in your in your education or in oh, your it is about to ooga booga <laughs> ooga booga, ooga booga. <laughs> what <laughs> um, uh, if you if you've ever spent a day in an investment bank especially if you started you know uh, you know back in the glory days you would this would have been drilled into you at some point in your in your training it's uh, or at any bank probably. Um, I'll, I'll probably fumble this, but let's see how I go from memory. The five C's of credit, um, capital, collateral, uh, capacity, character, and something else. <laughs> uh, conditions, right? Um, and, and there's a, like, you could argue that there's only three that are required, right? It's uh, capital, collateral, and conditions. They're the only three that are really required. Like character and capacity uh, aren't fundamental features of credit per se. They're features of credit in which condition enforcement is expensive. Mm. If I default on my mortgage, I do not lose my house immediately. There is a process. It costs the bank, I don't know, there's 50 to 100K. And paper to shift and all there's that people and paper to shift. There's the legal system to go through. Um, there is a condition enforcement is expensive. DeFi has brought the marginal cost of condition enforcement down to the cost of gas, right? It is insane. Like as in to liquidate a DeFi loan, it's a single transaction. On an L2, it's cents, right? On mainnet, even in the in the peak freaking um, you know, gas of the, the Monday crash was what, like two ETH, right? Mm -hmm. What's that? Like, you know. I think I, I think we pushed through a transaction at like six hundred guay. Gas price, yeah, it was pretty hectic. But but, <laughs> but six hundred k is not hundred k, right? No, like as in it's it's, uh, it's still it's we're still we're willing to pay it. We're willing to pay it, and um, but the marginal cost of enforce uh, condition enforcement is now zero as opposed to going through the the legal system. So you don't actually need character and capacity. You don't actually need to worry about who the person is, nor are they willing to are they able to service the debt mm, because it's in the contract. It's all been in the contract and you have the collateral sitting there and if the if it breaches loan covenants, right, if it breaches the loan conditions, it's like, you know, sure. that's it, done, right? Mm -hmm. um, per, my personal opinion, this changes everything. This is not like a small change. This is a huge change. We haven't yet seen the impact that this is going to have across society and across like basically debt provisioning. Yeah, because underwriting in our world. just turns into whether you can sign the contract. Underwriting turns into underwriting turns into can you provide collateral? collateral yeah. And what our main sort of like push in uh, in in the IMF is to create a permissionless system in which collateral can be provided. So we are not the arbiters of what is good or bad collateral. The market is mm -hmm. currently Ave Maker. You know, it's. Uh, it's it's governance, right? Like yeah. as in like all maker holder token columns together, they vote on what collateral comes in or otherwise. Is like we think that we can move that from 
governance to just market forces. And, and we think that that is, a, that is a material change in how credit's going to be permissioned and, and provisioned going forward, which is yeah. really yeah. our why, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah, yeah. you articulate that like super well. I think a lot of people, particularly when you're sort of trying to go, well, why would you want to move things onto the blockchain? It's like, that's, this is kind of the reason why. Like all those systems and papers and people and it's just built on enforcement, but now Coke can just enforce yeah. it. Yeah. And you just get rid of so many inefficiencies and so many other questions that just don't even be asked because now you know that there's this technology just deals with like, it. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm willing to entertain the, is it good for society that you can be liquidated instantly on your debt? I'm willing to entertain if that's good or bad. I actually think it's good because over time people will learn and they won't take as much you know leverage. They'll be a bit more, you know, like there's reasons why you can go up to, you know, 80% on your house and it's probably because you can't be insta liquidated but if you could would you do that and is that going to actually be a better market force you yeah. know going forward you know I'd argue it is I can I could entertain arguments on the other side but like you know there's fixes for that that doesn't need character and capacity you know that's just you know we're just talking about time now right so <laughs> that's such a good way to put it like just, I just want to ask, is it okay if I go like full philosophical on that for, for a sec? So like, um, like I've, I've learned loads from NAP, like from every aspect of looking at markets, even just in the few months that we've been working on IMF. But it's like, um, I, I've noticed that like a lot of the concepts that get discussed in finance and economics, they're like, they're these inherently human things, right? Like th there's no other animals really with these kinds of debt systems in place. Like we're, we're born and we immediately owe a debt to society, right? Like we're just born into this system. <clears throat> and I like to think about like, not only are these systems more efficient and just all out better in a lot of ways and actually less complicated, um, they're more accessible, they're more fair, all, all the above. But they also, when you market max these things and just go all in with these experiments, it just produces so much useful data that's not assumption, where a lot of the legal system does practice on assumptions. Like they'll, they'll get some random like survey and be like, this is enough to justify, you know, this pushing this bill through, you know, or whatever it is. Um, and I, I like to think like really, really big term, like to the extremities. And if you think like what we're learning with all these markets in place now, in future generations, like we're going to look back on this truth machine and be able to like see what happened in the past with true clarity and like know that it's tamper proof and then be able to use that pr to predict our future. Mm -hmm. And as we're entering into this like AI age, it's really good to have this kind of data integrity that's going to inform the decisions we make to accelerate as a species. And if we need to escape the planet at some point, we will because of these kinds of systems in place. Uh, and a lot of people um, who are incumbents who are threatened by these systems, yeah. they'll argue the opposite side of that, right? That's not, yeah. yeah, and, and a, a lot of the pushback I get around some of these like crazy ideas is they're like, oh, that's not how we think about the future. And it's like, it literally is. Like that's what the study of history is. It's to determine what happened in the past so we can have some idea of what might come in the future. And we're going from this like, I think I said it to Nap recently, it's like clay tablets, you know, like you're etching into stone not that long ago. Mm. And now we have a literal truth machine. It's like a portal to the future. We can communicate with like, five generations from now, just put it on chain. They're going to read it. <laughs> it's fascinating. Like, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's really fascinating. <laughs> um, so when we escape to Mars, we need to get there. Like the first statue we're going to build is like one of Pepe or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if Elon has anything to do with it, it's probably going to be Doge. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I would prefer Pepe. And as long as he's wearing some uh, pit vipers and doing the Mog uh, thing as well. <laughs> yeah, and just capture, capture the, capture both the memes of this cycle. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, keep going. That was, I was, I was going to say just. Drop your chain of thought. Um, sp speaking of like this, the, these sorts of interplanetary, intergalactic, you know, visionaries like someone like Elon Musk, like, you know, he's literally thinking about like, leaving the planet because like it might be a necessity at some point in the future so we should figure out if it's possible right so that <laughs> there's just so much there's there's so much to be said for people like that like not because of what value they provide economically or or even you know what um 
what problems they can solve, but just the fact that they can inspire a lot of people, you know, like a lot of people criticize uh, um, the musks of the world, but like they're, they're the, the real time superheroes that kids are like, wow, mummy, did you see that like this guy just like sent this Tesla on its yeah. way to Mars? <laughs> like, you know, like it's so cool that this stuff's happening in yeah. our time. And I just think it's so cool that we can, um, we can record this stuff and, and, and be able to make our, mark on history and know that it'll be there yeah um in the future on that theme of like experimentation i remember listening to uh alan watt um sort of um, a sh clip on youtube or whatever and someone asked he was giving his response um, um about a time when he was asked going well what's your argument philosophical argument against say um uh, what do you call it like where you can design your babies like you can genetically design up your own baby and choose whatever you want right oh, yep. and his response was well you know like if you talk to the person people who parents are really sporty, they're going to want their kid to be sporty and their kid, the parents are really academic, they're going to want their kid to be academic and they're going to choose. But he goes, you know, the way kind of nature works and the way kind of evolution happened is like, yeah, but what about that guy who's really interested in mog? Or what about that guy who's really interested in, you know, like some random bug to go and learn something with, you know, and it, this, in, with all we talk about, about experimentation and memeing, like you need that experimentation. You need to go have those people out there just trying any kind of crazy shit because you just don't know when it's going to happen to yeah we need the humans to go out there and lick frogs right like as in like that's <laughs> <Right>? yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, try, we know which mushrooms are good and bad because yeah. someone ate it and someone had a great time someone had a real shit time right? <laughs> <laughs> but we needed that experimentation to kind of advance the species and um which is why yeah memes are important so are we we going camping with some mushrooms is that what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Sponsored by Independent Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, maybe I'll have a story about that offline. I was gonna <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. I was going <laughs> to say, you know, I know, I know, you guys are a big Swanee supporters, but you know, <laughs> frogs are where it's at. <laughs> frogs are where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. All right, so what, what have we got left to cover? I feel like we've covered a lot of territory today. Oh, it's been fun. It's been fun? Yeah, yeah. it's been like, th this is great for like, you know, a couple of ADHD nerds, right? <laughs> We're just like bouncing off the walls and that's, it's on it's on camera and on a microphone. What more could you ask for? <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for dropping by today. It's been heaps of fun. Um, I guess, um, uh, how get in contact with you guys and all kinds of yeah. stuff. Like he, what, what, and also what do you need to shill before we wrap it up? So how do we get in contact with you and what would you like to share? What was your... Um, contact Twitter. Contact Twitter. I am Nap Enjoyer. Oh, and it's spelt a bit differently, isn't it? I, oh, yeah. En enjoyer spelt correctly. <laughs> 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 um, if you're a crypto person, you'll know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing it'll be in the show notes and, and whatnot. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you can find me. Um, all my links are at Gami dot wtf and it's gami like origami um and as for the imf the website is uh international meme dot fund it looks like an old uh mac system one so enjoy having a click around and just be careful if you click on the porn folder while you're in the <laughs> office <laughs> Uh, or maybe or, or maybe don't be careful just, uh, <laughs> just, just 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 do it just maybe you know, that's what I'm going yeah. Yeah, just go all in um uh it uh, this is probably the most interesting stat about the IMF which is uh we launched the app we made it yeah you know, Gum, Gummy's a you know amazing creative director among other things and you really wanted to push for something that had a bit of a feel to it that wasn't just like a boring defi app so it's styled in this theme of you know a mac system one our entire aesthetic is like 80s Wall Street, uh, which is which I think is really cool. So you know, hat tip, Gami, great, uh, great stuff. But uh, you know, we had a desktop, so we're like, we need stuff on the desktop. So we put a porn folder in, um, uh, and and everyone, like, as in the, the 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 server logs don't lie. Everyone opens the app, clicks the porn folder before they click anything else. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and so, um, if nothing else, I, I do feel like that was my, you know, most important contribution to society. <laughs> it's, uh, and, and, uh, and it's, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys, uh, discover it, discover the fun for yourself. So I'll leave, I'll leave that tidbit there, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the shill. And I guess, uh, you know, follow the IMF on Twitter where we're really focusing on this, uh, I guess, 
you know, the side of the market which just wants to, you know, deposit deposit stables and earn yield and and uh, you know farm for tokens, farm for you know farm volatility. So that's that's our next sort of like you know big push. Mm. We we have an incentive structure at the moment, which is if you just go and use the protocol and borrow borrow some money, you get some uh, you'll get some IMF tokens. That is. That's uh, that's live at the moment, and you know we'll continue to be live. But you know we're really uh, we're really leaning into this. You know we're pre ball time to bolster liquidity. So uh, watch this space. You'll hear more from us. And and if you don't think it's completely retarded, support us. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. No, that was thanks great. for having us. That was no thanks for coming by. We'll do. We've got to do more build stuff. You're right. Independent reserve the trusted cryptocurrency exchange.